welcome to another fabulous gig log. Daryl here. We are gonna rock a wedding reception tonight. It's gonna be a good time. And to be quite frank, this is the most nervous I've been for a gig in a while. Almost every piece of gear is completely new. I've tried it at home, but never used it at a gig. Even this phone that I'm shooting this is new, so I've never used this at a gig before. So this will be interesting. Let's go ahead and unload. <laughs> yep, it's snowing in April. Gotta love Utah weather. This is trip number two. Not bad to be able to do everything in two trips. Yeah, Camille and Hunter's wedding tonight is taking place at the 1903. The brand new owner took place. This is just a gorgeous venue. Let's go inside. Let me show you what I got set up. This is my first time having a white setup, so everything is still very white. We have the Evox 12s, of course. From the back side, this black cable sticks out, but we've got some white ones coming. Of course, we've got the Humdrip B3s, it's the first time using this booth, and this thing does not wobble. You can shake, this thing is rock solid, and it is huge. It fits a lot of equipment, it fits a lot of stuff on top as well as on the bottom. So I got some of my cases and my bag right here, as well as my cables just bunched up. Most of my bags is able to put in a storage closet. Just always ask venue staff where that is and they'll usually try to help you out. So I've been using the Bun Gear Command Center for like the past three years. And I really liked how I could keep everything pretty plugged in. And I'm trying to emulate that workflow as best I can with a quick set table that sets up and takes down. So I have like this guitar pedal board. It comes in like this nice bag. And this thing is incredibly lightweight, it's only two pounds. But yeah, I have like my power strap on right here. I have a six channel mixer, a wireless microphone, a docking station, as well as my DMX transmitter. I'm just keeping it down here so you can't see it up there. So the Humpter B3 has like these two holes right here where you can like feed in cables. So I have all these cables already pre-bunched together. And of course, they're all white. And I wanted to achieve the sunken look as much as I can because I want people to see my hands. They'll be able to see my hands with this setup, trying to mitigate the messiness of cables as best I can. There's one black cable because my docking station, I need USB 3.0. The only white cable I have is 2.0, so waiting for an eBay supply, so I'm using what I got. This is a new laptop as well with a case. I have a pretty cool reel showing how I customized this thing. Yeah, this laptop is a MacBook M1 Pro with the minimum specs, so 512 SSD, as well as 16 gigs of RAM. I only paid like 1400 bucks for this, but it does stem perfectly. I'm only gonna be using this laptop for DJing. I have other laptops for other stuff, like for my video editing for these videos I make. This is my first time having a MacBook Pro. Well, I did have one before for like a week, but I'm gonna try this. I'll give my reasons why I'm switching from Windows as a DJ machine. I'm using Virtual DJ. Some of you may have questions about why I'm not using Engine DJ as well as my Denon Prime 4 Plus. I'll detail that in another video. Of course, I have my Control One. Thanks to 12 inch skins for making my gear look white. So yeah, a white, a white Control One. And I have this plugged into the docking station as well as my transmitter down below. And man, I can't stress this enough. This laptop stand is awesome. It protrudes out so it gets closer to me. So as a tall dude, this is paramount. I love it. This is a new mixer too. This was completely... Maybe a PNS playing your cocktail hour. But I just really like the look of rotating platters. I think that will help my setup. And this is just fun, especially for scratching. And this setup is normally like very impractical to bring to gigs because it's very big and heavy, but we're bringing it today very different than what I've used in the past. So practice on it back at home as much as I could. And then something about this booth I like is it has this headphone hook so I can put on my headphones. As well as a drink holder, which I don't really use all that much. Yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with this setup. People are gonna be able to see my hands. 
These will look really cool. This will be really functional and fun to use as well. So this is the layout. Like this is where the dance floor is going to be. I mean, in a perfect world, I probably would have had a speaker on either side of that staircase. Or even better yet, if I could be where the sweetheart's table is and be pointing out, that would be ideal. What's so great about this system is that when it's time for dinner, I'm going to point this speaker that way to send music to those folks. And then we'll twist it this way for these folks on this speaker. And then we'll point them more towards the dance floor when it is time. You can't see that, but it is snowing. I hope the drive home does not suck. I almost forgot, here are my lights. I'm only doing basic dance floor lighting tonight, so just using these tubes. So I've used these tubes in the past. These are brand new. I've never used these at a gig before. And they're the white model, as well as this on-stage quick lock adapter. So this thing's just super easy to take on and off. I love it. I have a couple of these on stands. And after the formalities, before the first dance, I'm gonna set them on that side of the dance floor just to give some more ambiance over there. Okay, so real quick, something I need to do is that shade of off-white does not match the chandeliers. That's gonna drive me crazy. So we're gonna go to sand switch and we're gonna edit this static scene. And it's already all amber. Let's reduce the white. Let's reduce the white a bit. Let's reduce the white a little bit more. Uh, it's hard to see on this camera, but that is pretty good. There we go. Much better shade. All right, that is the setup walkthrough. So let's get on with the wedding. So just changing the lighting before we start the first dance. It's just more optimized to be around the dance floor and that took like two seconds. So with so many new pieces of gear, I forgot to change my Insta360 from time-lapse mode to video mode. So enjoy the few clips I managed to capture on my phone. That's it, the gig is over. I'm all packed up, about to load my car. I think overall it went pretty good. I think that was a huge mistake to try so many new pieces of gear. Everything worked pretty well. Um, there were some quirks with the Rain 72 and 12 that was a little bit different. So like the microphone input, I didn't realize there was like a button that I had to turn on to turn on the microphone. So just some of those things could have been ironed out a little bit better by practicing more at home. The hugest thing was switching over from a Windows machine to a Mac. That was very hard. I had a really hard time getting my music library onto my Mac. Like I had all my files backed up on the cloud, but trying to change the path of everything, that yeah, was very difficult. Basically what I did is I rebuilt all my crates. I installed Crate Hackers and that helped me. It saved like all the crates I've had in the past. I was able to find all of my files on my computer. So that was a huge lifesaver. But some of the files were corrupted and some of there were some dead spots in the music like a song was only halfway loaded and it died so i was able to figure out the pattern and avoid that that sucks because i tried out every single one of like their formality songs as well as the must play song list but of like eight thousand tracks that i transferred over some of them just weren't working so now i know for next time for my next gig in a week so live and learn right but overall everyone said great things Got great compliments from all the other vendors. People really liked the new white setup. I got so many compliments. Uh. Yeah, after gigging with this thing after a single gig, this Humpter B3, 
I think it's pretty cool. It looks really nice. It's not too bad to transport. It's really easy to set up. Still kind of a pain to have to wire everything. I miss having that workflow of everything pre-wired, but the guitar pedal board definitely it helps mitigate that. But yeah, overall, I'm pleased. A solid piece of gear. What are your thoughts? What do you think of the white setup? Is it a bunch of DJ nonsense or is there some merit to it? Let me know down in the comments below. Please smash like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>